That was a lot of energy out there in that hallway. <laughs> Welcome all. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Antonio Reynoso. I'm the president of the best borough in the city of New York, which is Brooklyn, first and foremost. And I'm so excited to have you all here today um, as we kick off Pride Month and celebrate our LGBTQIA plus uh, neighbors. Uh, we have some fun in store. You guys are going to have a great time. Uh, performances by Gotham Cheer, who you saw a little taste of outside, and activist and drag icon Just Jalisa um, are coming right up. But before we get to all the good stuff, I want to talk about what this month is all about, what we really mean when we talk about pride. Because pride isn't just an emotion. It's more than just feeling that feeling that you get when you feel wholly, totally, and lovingly of yourself. We can't let it end there because pride is so much more than that feeling. Rather, pride is a motivation. It's the place which we find our responsibility to act, to drive forward. No matter if you're part of the LGBTQIA plus or straight or otherwise, here in Brooklyn, what pride means is a borough where everyone can be the most expansive, most free version of themselves. Pride means getting to walk our streets without fear, to dance in our clubs without a second thought. It means to be, it means to be and love openly. It's about honoring the queer history written into our borough, from the Brooklyn Heights Promenade to Coney Island Boardwalk, and using those memories to propel us towards an even better, more inclusive Brooklyn. And this is important. This borough, this city, we're more than a dot on a map. We're our center point of the world, a site of convergence where people from all over, all ages, all cultures, and religions, and backgrounds come together as one. We have been, and we can be, the catalyst for revolutions in acceptance and freedoms that touch every corner of this country and this world. And we need to recognize that. We need to see that power and take hold of it. Because right now, right now, our communities are facing political persecution nationwide, a rapid erosion of their rights and abilities to be fully and totally themselves. And, we, and just as we fight to do better by our queer community here, we've got to set an example everywhere. So when Florida tries to silence our young people, we say gay. When Iowa bans gender-affirming care, we expand it. When Tennessee tries to outlaw drag, we bring it to the people's house. This is a borough where we fight for our LGBTQIA plus New Yorkers to unconditionally, irre irrevocably, find a home and build a family. And we have some work to do of our own, from housing to mental health, we need to show up better for our community's residents. We need to ensure that trans kids are loved for who they are. Ensure that black and brown queer people are housed. Ensure that no gender non-conforming person is denied their dream job for how they express themselves. Ensure that anti-LGBTQIA plus discrimination has no place in healthcare or anywhere else for that matter. And here, gathered with all of you, I know that Brooklyn is home to the people that can make that happen. We can get a standard here and everywhere, and I'm so grateful to the activists and community leaders and artists that are helping guide us there. So tonight, I have the privilege of recognizing some of those that are doing that work. So first, and this is the celebration part, I'd like to commend Drag Story Hour. Can we give them a round of applause for some foremost? for their glamorous and fabulous work with our city's children. I applaud them for showing positive and proudly queer role models to our younger generations, showing children that it's okay to be yourself and that there can be a world possible where everyone has the freedom to express themselves as they are. I thank Drag Story Hour for their outstanding services in transforming our libraries, our schools, and bookstores into lively and fantastical places. And I thank Drag Story Hour for all that they contribute to our borough in helping our communities become 
of Brooklyn for All. Now, therefore, I get to present Drag Story Hour with this proclamation and invite Yunhi Prophet to accept this award. So please, can you please come up? I guess I have to do the, 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 the formal version of this. So, whereas on behalf of all Brooklynites, I commend Drag Story Hour for their glamorous and fabulous work with children. Again, I want to applaud them for showing positive and proudly queer role models to our younger generations, showing children that it's okay to be themselves. I thank Drag Story Hour for outstanding services, transforming again our library, schools, and bookstores into lively and fantastical places. I thank Drag Story Hour for all that they contribute to our borough and helping our communities become a Brooklyn for all. And therefore, I, Antonio Reynoso, with the power vested in me by the residents of Brooklyn, do hereby proclaim June 5th, 2023, Drag Story Hour Celebration Day in Brooklyn, New York. Thank you, what an honor. Uh, my name is Yunhee Prophet. I'm the executive director of Drag Story Hour New York City. Um, as you know, many of you know, Drag Story Hour New York City provides a range of programming for ages three to 18. And we've also started working with, sorry, oh, sure. sorry. We've also started working with older adult populations as well. Um, our courageous storytellers work in libraries, schools, museums, community centers, open streets citywide. For youth, learning about drag is a form of dress up and play assists in their understanding of gender diversity beyond the gender binary. It helps them celebrate creativity and difference in themselves and others, and it further helps them become more inclusive as they honor space for diversity. As an organization, we are proud to say that we build empathy citywide, and in Brooklyn in particular. Some of our programming includes the neurodivergent programs for older adults, Spanish, French, Cantonese, after school programs, young adult reading programs. Many of these programs end with the question and answer section. And the response that we get from our communities is open, curious, and seeking understanding. We have parents asking about their children's safety, how best to support their own. We get questions about the protesters outside. We have people coming into the libraries to thank us for our work. But this work, it could not happen without you all. Drag Story Hour in New York City has been putting on programs since 2016. We've been growing every year. In 2022, we held 244 programs. It's halfway through 2023. We've already done, we're gonna be doing 150 at the halfway point. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. As an organization, we are centered in community. Our incredible storytellers lead this organization and the voice of Drag Story Hour in New York City is their voice, it is the storyteller voice. For the past eight months or so, we've been closely working with city-based officials, various organizations, internal library staff, among others, to ensure that our programs are as safe as they can be. In these unconscionable moments of extremist protest, our storytellers' resolve helps us to fuel our mission. We will not be silenced, we will not be cowed but we also know that we could not do this work without you all. We could not continue to do this work without you all, without the support of our officials, our community, our residents. As an organization during Pride Month, we want to offer our gratitude to all of you for lifting us, for supporting us, for hell or high watering it with us. Thank you for centering queer, trans, non-binary, non-conforming voices. We will continue to spread joy, literacy, understanding, and glitter wherever we go. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was fun. Uh, also want to acknowledge we've been joined by district leaders Jackie Painter and Julio Pena that are here with us. Stand up, guys, stand up, let them see you. Yeah. Next, I'd like to celebrate, uh, we're going to get it, Andre Guess, all right, for his service to our community through providing support and advocacy for the LGBTQ plus community, um, specifically the people of color. I commend this work at Griot Circle, 
where he is now deputy director and has dedicated 10 years towards supporting the organization's wellness programs and strengthening its LGBTQ older adults program. I witnessed his work as the HIV anti-stigma strategist at Gay Men of African Descent, or GMAD, where he expanded HIV education in the community. I recognize Andre, Andre's passion as a performer and writer where he has worked to uplift LGBTQ artists of color at his theater company, Flavor Cabaret, and his, and his acting with his notable one-man play, which explores what it means to be black, gay, and a man. And I salute him for all that he has contributed towards Brooklyn for all. All right. I now present Andre with this citation and ask that you please share a few words if you would like. Please come on up. To say I'm honored is just an understatement, um, and I'll be transparent with you. Although I live in Harlem, don't kick me out. Don't oh. kick me out. <laughs> that was an oversight. I know that's an oversight. <laughs> One I'll correct because Brooklyn is where it's happening. Uh, I've been working uh, in LGBT field here in Brooklyn, uh, with Real Circle for 10 years, GMAT for seven years. So there's a lot of commitment that I've made to uh, Brooklyn, and Brooklyn is always in a house in my heart. Uh, and it will always be here. I have, what is Griot Circle? Griot Circle is an organization for LGBTQ older adults, specifically African American, but we welcome everybody. Um, it was started 27 years ago by Regina Shavers when she recognized that there was no place, an affirming place for LGBT adults as they age. And sadly, there's very few places that recognize and accept those who are aging. We are a place that not only affirm older adults, but we also affirm African-American identities, recognizing that as we get older, we're, be it, we're less, we're invisible, we're not seen, uh, we're not recognized and our voices are muted. And, it's, it's, and I say this because I want people to really understand and recognize that you may not believe it, especially um, the younger folks in this room, you may not believe it, but you will be an older adult. Yes. As much as you can find it, you can go to CVS and put as much age cream as you want. <laughs> but it will not work. But I want to just share the realities of what our older adults go through. For, for you young people, for some of you, as you get older, you may have a thousand followers on TikTok or whatever. But as you get older, your social networks fall away, they pass away, they go away, or you just get smaller. So you find yourself being isolated and not having really nobody to speak to. As you get older, you recognize that your medical care is more important, but then you're also being seen by doctors who don't or won't accept you for being LGBT, or probably won't accept you just because you're African American. As you get older, you recognize that um, you know, although the LGBTQ is a wonderful field, that as a person of color, there are still those isms where you're not accepted and you're not wanted. That doors that can open for white gay uh, individuals are still closed for you. As you get older, you recognize that these things that you took for granted, your food, your security, your housing, is taken for granted. Because often as LGBTQ, especially with people of color, you're the first ones who encounter gentrification, who encounter food insecurities, and encounter inequality uh, in income. So that's why Griot Circle is here, is we address those inequalities. Our motto is we don't do bingo. Because when often people hear about a senior center, they think that you know, it's a place where you come and you just, you know, have your little lunch, you eat your applesauce, you go play bingo or whatever, but not Griot Circle. No, we don't do that. What we do is 
affirm you, your identity through wellness programs, through innovative programs such as Still Standing, which addresses HIV and older adults, um, where those who are living with HIV 70 and over go out in the community and advocate uh, for discussions about HIV. And as I've went out and witnessed, I've had somebody 85, 80, 85 who tell me, you know, I'm probably having more sex than you. And I was like, woo! First I had to clutch my pearls, but then, I, then it was affirming knowing that, oh, okay, it's, it, it ain't, the well ain't gonna dry up then. I still got some time to get all that stuff out. But unfortunately, we, as you get older, you lose access to all the, the tools that are out there. You, you lose access to condoms, you lose access to PrEP, all these things that are keeping you safe. Um, you know, and so we also have Buddy to Buddy program, which deal with isolation among seniors. I forgot your name, Adrian, where one thing that means so much is to have somebody call an older adult and say, you know what, I was just thinking of you. Even if that's done once a week, that has so much value and you don't recognize it. So we have to start investing right now in our seniors and, and really start you know, putting our money where our mouth is. And we, especially when it comes to people of color and people of color, uh, LGBT organizations in general, we really need to start showing up and not only just walking through the doors, but also investing uh, financially. And you know, oftentimes, um, and I'm not sounding bitter, but this is the reality, is that when we uh, financially uh, support organizations that's often, often white-led, you know, you go to the website and you see the white um, ED and the, the board of directors, we need to really start looking beyond that and start investing and supporting LGBT of color, and especially those that are led by African Americans, people of color. That's where the future is, investing in it right now. So thank you very, very much for this, and I'm very honored, and I, I carry this with pride. And we, can we have a, a representative from the AIDS Healthcare Foundation to come up? Marlene, there you go. Mickey, please come on up. Yes. And Jackie and Julio, can you guys come up? Uh, let's get in front of this here for our picture. This is going to be the group picture. You guys are going to keep it up here. Please, a big round. This is a celebration. I want a round of applause. Nobody, nobody got a drink in their hand or anything like that. You all should be able to clap. All right? Now, uh, we just called them up to take the picture, but one of our, our great uh, co-sponsors uh, that came to, to help us as a, as a host, we want to recognize their great work and want to allow for Marlene Laloda, who's the Senior Regional Director of AIDS Healthcare Foundation, to please come up and say a few words. <laughs> Round of applause like you mean it. Hi, everyone. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. It's nice to see all of you. There's some of you that I haven't seen, like Andre. It's been a long time. It's been some, so it's nice to come together and see old friends and make new friends. So we're the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, or AHF. We have been in Brooklyn for almost 13 years now. And we are right down the road from here, 475 Atlantic Avenue. So some of you may know us from our out of the closet thrift store on Atlantic Avenue, well, that's us, that's AHF. So what you may not know is that we offer free rapid HIV testing in the store seven days a week. We have a wellness clinic Tuesday and Wednesday evenings that provides free STI screening and treatment, which as, as you know, if you look at the data, STIs are off the chart. So 
Um, we're really proud to be able to do that. And of course, we have health care. We have wonderful providers on site. We have 2,200 uh, lives in care at our Brooklyn location, and we have a full service pharmacy. We also have mental health in the building as well, which is a huge need. So we are super excited to be here tonight. We love Brooklyn. That's We have sites all over the city, but, but for most of us, I have to say our heart is here in Brooklyn. And one thing I want to mention, that because it was brought up about multiple times tonight about how the rights of many groups, LGBT, immigrants, people of color, migrants, are really under attack in this country like I've never seen before. I've been working in HIV since the mid-80s, to date myself, and I've never seen anything like what we're going through now. So AHF, we are a global advocacy organization. That's a big part of what we do is advocacy. So we are pushing back. We are not accepting the way things are now in states led by Florida, by Texas, and others. So we're having a We the People march in South Florida on July 2nd, where we are mobilizing thousands of people to come. We're also going to do smaller versions of that in various cities across the country, and of course, New York City is one of them. So our We the People march is on June 29th at lunchtime in Washington Square Park. So the gentleman right there, Rashid, raise your hand. He will be at the reception, so please come and talk to him. Find out how you can get involved. We want to fill Washington Square Park, and we want to say we've had enough. New York City has had enough, New York State has had enough, and the United States has had enough. We are, it's time to take back our rights. So please, we hope to see you all there, and enjoy the evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And also, one of our sponsors is Ponce Bank, and I just gotta say, Ponce Bank shows up every single time uh, for this event and for other events in Borough Hall. They didn't ask to speak, they just wanna, I just wanna recognize them for always being a co-sponsor and helping us, so thank you, Ponce Bank, can we give them one? And now I'm gonna bring up the co-chair of the best pride parade in all of New York City, which is Brooklyn Pride. Um, and I can't tell you how grateful I am to have uh, Mickey as a friend and somebody that is consistently uh, doing God's work when it comes to looking out for the interests of the LGBTQ community and just recognizing we were talking about black, brown, uh, migrant, and just a diverse set of the LGBTQ community. And Mickey is not lost. It's not lost on him, the value of that. Uh, I want to call him up. So Mickey Heller, please come on up. I'll try and be brief, but you know, an old gay white man, Jewish white man, we don't, we, we speak. Um, there's something very funny about all this because about 14 years ago was the first time I stood at this pulpit because I've been with Brooklyn Pride for about 15 years now. And we've been doing this event through Marty Markowitz, uh, Eric Adams, and now this amazing new Brooklyn Borough President, Antonio Reynoso. I want to thank you for doing this for us again. A few people I want to acknowledge when we have an entire week of events coming up, and I just want to please, you will see in the lobby, or you got here in the Pride Guide, our uh, week of events. Also in the lobby, or downstairs in the rotunda, is the latest Gay City, City News, and lo and behold, page three. <laughs> Full page ad from the Gay City News. So like me, if you don't see as well as you used to, and yes, I am going to be visiting Griot Circle again very soon, because I am in that age group being 67 coming soon. But I want to acknowledge our board at Brooklyn Pride. Right here we have Ariel Sanders, please stand up, Cam Moore, and Kyle Naff. These three people and myself, we've put together the entire Pride Week, and we appreciate the people here at Borough Hall, Eileen Newman, who's been with here, at longer than I have put this together. I also want to acknowledge some of our sponsors are here tonight. In addition to AHF, National Grid, Adrian Jones is here. Downstairs in the rotunda, you'll see a couple of little uh, QR codes on plastic. We're taking a survey. We're asking you all to get involved in next year's event here. If you take your, fo your phone, take a picture of that QR code, you'll see it be led to a very short, brief survey. Please take that survey. It's being brought to you by another partner of ours, Alita. Woo! 
There's a lot I want to say to you, but there's, not, there's more time and more important to start to eat and party. So I'm going to ask that that door be open, and we want to bring one of our special guests. We're going to be treated to the people who showed you up in tonight. Please welcome Gotham Cheer. No. Right here. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. It's only called on my team. I can make you a very, very happy man. Just tease. Just tease. On behalf of the. Oh, right, go ahead, please. On behalf of the borough president we, and Brooklyn Pride and all the other guests and sponsors here, we want to thank you tonight. Like the Pied Piper, Gotham Cheer is going to lead you down to the rotunda where there are food, drink, more entertainment. Come join us and let's start partying.